welcome to another week's video for Going Deeper. Last week we were unpacking James chapter 5 verses 1 to 6, warning to rich oppressors. Now listen, you rich people, weep and wail because of the misery that is coming upon you. Your wealth has rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corruption will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workmen who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered innocent men who were not opposing you. These words are being written to, to people who were exploiting workers for them. Rich people who were not paying people fairly. But we too can learn a lesson from these verses. What do we love more? Do we love justice and fairness or do we love money? Money in and of itself isn't bad, it isn't evil. But the love of money can be. But it can be very dangerous if it gets into the wrong hands or if the love of money falls into the wrong people. Jesus warns us that money can be used in a sinful way and with wrong motives and for personal gain. Jesus often warns us that money can be sinful and used for personal gain, which is when it becomes corrupt. Money is like fire, when in the wrong hands it can be used for evil and for bad intention and can cause all sorts of damage. But when in the right hands, it can be used for good and it can bring life. We all need money and God has said that he will provide us with everything that we need. But he also says that he will give us enough. These verses in James chapter 5 are, are a warning against hoarding wealth. Hoarding wealth can be a bad thing. Colours fade, food goes off, clothes wear out, cars rust, houses fall down and decay. But the word of the Lord stands forever. God goes from everlasting to everlasting. Jesus encourages us to store up our treasures in heaven, where moths do not destroy, where rust does not cause decay, where thieves do not break in and steal. Where's your heart today? What are you chasing after? Are you chasing after more money, more things, or are you chasing after Jesus? This is a real challenge, especially when we live in such a consumer world where we all want the next best thing. But it's a challenge worth grappling with. And it's a question that we should be asking ourselves. Where's my heart? Is my heart chasing after money and stuff? Or is my heart chasing after Jesus? It's no bad thing to have nice things or even to have money, but it's where our heart is. What is your heart chasing after? Are you wholly and solely belonging to Jesus? Or are you still being distracted by the world and what the world has on offer? I love what James says in 4 verse 14. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Why do we bother storing up stuff here when our life is like a mist? Here today and tomorrow gone. We don't know what tomorrow might hold. We may well be in, in glory tomorrow. So why not store up for our, ourselves treasure in heaven? That treasure has a name and he's called Jesus. May Jesus be our treasure on earth and in heaven. Now, if you don't know how to make Jesus your treasure, well, why not try seeking him? Why not ask him to reveal himself to you and then allow your hearts to be captivated by him? There's a story in the Bible which sums us up really, really well. And this is a true story, not one of Jesus' parables, but an actual event that happened. 
Matthew 19, verse 16 onwards. Now a man came to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Jesus explains to him, If you want to be perfect, then go, sell your possessions, give the money to the poor, and then, and then you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. But this young man, he went away with a heavy heart and full of sorrow because he wasn't able to do that. He loved his possessions too much. He loved the thought of money too much to follow Jesus. May our hearts be fixed on Jesus, not on stuff. May our thoughts be full of Jesus and not full of money. So there it is. James's underlying message rings true yet again. Jesus is better. God gives us all that we need. Give away any surplus and chase after Jesus. Go for it guys. Have a great week. See you soon.